Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Diana and the Book Hunt. What I want to focus on today is my favorite tropes within romance books. I've seen quite a few videos on booktube of booktubers ranking um, tropes from favorite to least favorite, but I want to do a more kind of a philosophical approach or maybe a more in-depth approach to this type of video because I really want to discuss why certain tropes are favorites of mine, why they really work out well for me, why I tend to gravitate towards them and I'll also give you a couple of examples of books which include my favorite tropes. So without further ado let's just go ahead and dive into my favorite tropes within romance novels. When I think about why certain tropes work really well for me, I think that for some of them it's the fact that um, in real life I appreciate those types of relationships as well. One of them being friends to lovers. I absolutely adore the friends to lovers trope. I have to say that I love seeing a buildup of a friendship where we get a strong foundation of a very strong relationship between two characters uh, based on love and mutual respect. And then whenever uh, kind of sparks start to fly, so romantic um, kind of hints get thrown in and a physical attraction gets thrown in, that's when um, everything becomes interesting within the book and then um, I think that the foundation for the relationship is just that much stronger because the two characters already have a shared history and love for each other. Um, there is a lot of angst and yearning and um, kind of those small moments when the two characters start to notice each other in a different way. Those are the moments that I live for within the friends to lovers trope and I absolutely love these types of stories. Um, thinking about examples for this trope, um, I thought about a book that I don't know how to explain very well without spoiling it, so I'm just going to mention it. Um, it's The Smallest Part by Amy Harmon. This is an amazing story. It's quite emotional. I do have to say that there's a lot of things going on within this book. There is a love triangle, there's a bit of jealousy, um, uh, there is a, li a little bit of... Um, grief also thrown in there is a single parent trope so there's quite a bit going on within that book but it's so worth your time i absolutely loved it when i read it i read it i think like three years ago or so and i still remember it quite vividly um so i do recommend this one and the second book I want to mention is one of my favorites that I um, read last year, which is by Emily Henry. It's People We Meet on Vacation. It's quite a popular book, but if you haven't picked it up yet, I do encourage you to do so because it's ab absolutely wonderful. Uh, we have the two main characters, Alex and Poppy, who um, become friends during their college years. And they have a very interesting dynamic between them because at the beginning it looks like they're at absolute opposites and then when they start spending time together going on vacations together um, they find out that they actually match very well and the interesting thing about this book is that it has a past and present uh, arc where we see in the past how they develop their friendship and then in the present we notice that something has gone wrong and they've drifted apart but Poppy very much wants to work out their um, <laughs> the problem that has uh, arisen within their relationship so she invites him on uh, a vacation again so that they can spend some time together. I absolutely love Emily Henry's writing, the way that she creates these uh, bonds between the two characters, especially within the friends to lovers. Um, a trope that she uses in this book and actually she has a new book coming up next week which is called Book Lovers. I can't wait for it. I'll be picking it up the day that it comes out and um, yeah just to go back to people we meet on vacation I definitely recommend it. It's worth your time. The next trope I'm going to discuss is one which I hold very dear to my heart. It's one of my very, very favorites and one of the books that I'm going to mention for this trope, actually the only book I'm going to mention for this trope, is one of my all-time favorite books um, that I've read. The trope is Marriage in Trouble, the Marriage in Trouble trope. And the book I'm going to discuss is All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. 
I have to say that maybe because I'm in my mid 30s, um, I'm no longer very much compelled to pick up too many books which center around people just falling in love and kind of the dynamic of, um, of them getting together. It's more interesting for me to read books with people who have established relationships already and um, kind of go through specific struggles, uh, some obstacles. Um, it's very interesting for me to read about how they're going about the situations that they encounter, um, how they deal with certain problems within a marital life. And yeah, it just makes me think and contemplate my own reactions within certain situations. And it's just more interesting and I'm more curious about these types of um, situations than just the regular boy meets girl and they fall in love. So yeah, All Your Perfects is a perfect example of a book with this trope within it. And I do have to say that there is a very sensitive topic covered within this book. So do research it if you haven't picked it up and you are interested in pick it, picking it up. Um, but yeah, this type of story where we see there's again a past and present um, situation going on within the book. We see in the past chapters how the two characters, Quinn and Graham, had fallen in love, how much passion and chemistry they have, um, how much um, they've imagined of a perfect life together. And then in the present arc, we see that a lot has gone wrong, a lot has gone not according to their plan and um, you get to ache for both of the characters because of all the things that have happened in the meantime a couple of years into their marriage. Um, you get frustrated with some of the characters, you get um, uh, emotional with them as well. It's, it's a really really compelling and amazing an amazing read so I definitely recommend it. It's really one of my top favorite books that I've ever read and it's actually my favorite Colleen Hoover book. I know that everyone loves it ends with us more than anything in Ugly Love as well but this one is my absolute favorite. If you've seen any of my previous videos that I've posted on my channel you will have noticed undeniably that I've recommended many books which have the second chance romance trope within them. It is really one of my favorites. I'm a sucker for a second chance romance and I think that it really has to do with um, my opinion about this type of relationship in general in real life as well. Um, I think that many people um, believe that second chance romances don't work and that is not my opinion to be honest. Um, I think that whenever the first time around two people get together and the relationship doesn't work it could be a timing issue, it could be that the two people uh, aren't yet at the stage where their two characters are compatible but that does not mean that those two characters can't make it work at a different stage in their life when they have gotten to know themselves better, better and when they have developed certain mechanisms and tools with which they can kind of make a relationship work. So I think that a lot of times when young people get together and their relationship doesn't work, um, at a later stage in their life when they've gained some more experience and more insights within life and they've had different opportunities to get to know themselves better because I think that that is a huge problem for young people that when they get into serious relationships many times they don't know their own wants, needs and priorities and then inevitably when they get together with someone they get provoked into thinking about those things and many times they don't match well with the people they get together with but at certain stages you kind of reevaluate yourself in your life and um, yeah I think that second chances are definitely worth the try especially if you're willing to do the work and I have a perfect example for this um, trope where we see two characters who have been apart for quite a while but uh, are willing to do the work to try and make it work the second time around even if there is fear and even if there is appreh apprehension about the past and what has gone wrong. 
The book that I'm talking about is Theo Williams' uh, Seven Days in June. I read this book at the beginning of this year and I am absolutely convinced that it's going to end up in my top 10 books of the year because it was absolutely marvelous. We're following two characters who are both um, in the book world, they're both writers and um, they meet when they're teenagers and they spend a week together which is very eventful and very impactful for both of them but they get torn apart for certain reasons and they don't see each other for 15 years and they have a chance encounter at a book event uh, 15 years later and um, they still feel uh, very strongly for each other so they do decide to uh, meet each other and see where a conversation will lead them um, after they've met so it's just such a powerful emotional and amazing read and um, I have to say that it's just very realistically portrayed in my opinion uh, it, it doesn't focus too much on the fluffy things it does focus on the hard topics within um, a relationship and what can go wrong and the fears that uh, people experience of uh, things going wrong again so yeah I recommend this book with both hands. It's an absolutely marvelous read. The next trope is one which I just recently discovered that I love a lot um, because I hadn't read too many books prior to last year, including this trope. Uh, the trope is fake dating. And the first book that I read, I believe, with this trope is Christina Lawrence, The Soulmate Equation, which came out last year. I absolutely loved it. And I think that the trope was worked out really well within that book but the book that I want to focus on more in more detail with this trope within it is The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. It's a book which was really hyped up last year and I think that it um, has a merit that it deserves really this type of hype because um, both the trope for fake dating but also the other tropes within the book were just worked out so amazingly well and this author this is her debut novel um it was just so impactful and so amazing that she had such ra uh, raving reviews for it um within this book we have two main characters who work in stem um i think that adam is a professor and then um, olive is a phd student and they strike up this fake dating relationship for different reasons. Each of them has a motive of why um, they need this fake relationship um, in front of um, either friends or uh, for their job. And it just works out so well that we get this special kind of spice within the book because of this trope, because um, the two characters are forced to interact in certain um, situations um, to prove that they're a couple and then those situations kind of make them see that um, they view the other person as something more than just a colleague or a friend or whatever so yeah there is just a little bit of angst thrown in because of the fake dating aspect and I love that about um, this type of a story and I love this book very dearly and I definitely recommend it if you haven't read it yet Next up, I'm going to focus on the grumpy sunshine trope because it's absolutely one of my favorites and I've read just so many books which include this trope and I'm never going to get tired of it. Um, whether it's the hero who is the grump and the heroine who is the sunshine or the other way around, it doesn't matter to me in both the situations. I absolutely love it when we have someone who is kind of negatively viewing the world perceiving everything with a bit of um, a cloudy perspective and then we get someone who is an absolute optimist who breaks through their barriers and kind of sheds uh, an absolute um, <laughs> bright ray of light within their lives which makes them view the world differently i absolutely love the aspect of a grumpy sunshine trope within a book and there's just so many that I can mention. There's Mariana Zapata's uh, The Wall of Winnipeg and Me and also Hands Down where we have the reverse scenario of I think the guy is the sunshine and the girl is the grump. 
we have um, Britney C. Cherry's uh, Element series, we have The Air He Breathes and also The Gravity of Us I believe also has this trope within it and also recently I read the mixtape which has a bit of a grumpy sunshine dynamic as well but the book which I most recently read which kind of made a very big impact on me because of the trope within it um, is Lauren Asher's The Fine Print. Within this book we have Zara who is the sunshine and Rowan who is the grump. Rowan inherited a theme park, Disneyland type of theme park from uh, his grandfather and he has kind of bad connotations with the theme park so he's not very thrilled that he is going to be managing it for a specific reason that his grandfather has stipulated in his inheritance and he meets Zara there who is an employee at the theme park and she is an absolute ray of sunshine when it comes to the theme park she has ideas and um, kind of a love for the theme park she wants to see it thrive she wants to develop it and to um, get the best out of the theme park for um, all of the visitors. So when they meet each other, Rowan promotes her to a creator within the park so that she can really focus on the ideas that she wants to implement within the park. And that's when we see interactions between them where she kind of breaks down his barriers. And many times I do have to say that the Sunshine... Um, sunshine character whenever it's the female it's kind of worked in as them being very nice and very kind of meek maybe and um quirky types of girls where zara is not this type of a character she is very sunshiny and very optimistic but she's also very feisty and very opinionated which i absolutely loved for her character so she didn't take any crap from rowan and she put him in his place whenever necessary and i think their dynamic just really worked out really well because she was able to break down his barriers on many different fronts and really challenge him to be better and do better. So if you haven't picked up this book, please do so because it's definitely an amazing read. And there is a second book which came out and a third one which will also come out soon. And they're focusing on Rowan's brothers who are also tied to this inheritance from their grandfather. So I can't wait to read those stories as well. And I'll let you know what I think about them once I get my hands on them. The last trope that I want to focus on today is the pining hero um, trope and I do have to say that it does tend to work out better for me at least when it's the hero who is pining for the heroine and not the other way around. Um, and when I think about this trope I think that it has to do with the fact that um, a hero has been longing for the heroine for a long time and they have a very passionate love that they hold within them that they want to unleash onto the heroine so this is what really gets me amped up to read about their relationship so when i think about this trope i think about uh, a story that i read at the end of last year it's alexis daria's a lot like adios it's the second book within a duet that she wrote um there is a friends to lovers trope within this book as well and a second chance romance so all three combined the pining hero second chance and friends to lovers just is a match made in heaven in my opinion at least for me because these are all favorite tropes of mine that uh, are incorporated into one story we're following michelle and gabe who were friends as teenagers and they shared one kiss which kind of led to um, Michelle thinking that they're going to try out a relationship. But because Gabe has um, a lot of problems within his home, uh, he decides that he needs to leave town and go to college somewhere very far away from home, which means that they get split up. And Michelle doesn't understand his reasoning and why she was left behind. Um, many years later, Gabe reconnects with Michelle because of a working relationship that they um, that they form with each other and we see a lot of pining from Gabe's side we see a lot of um, 
groveling also because Michelle is also the type of woman who doesn't uh, take too much crap from anyone and she wants to stand up for herself so there is a lot of groveling going on in this book as well which works out very well for me as well and I absolutely loved it I do recommend it and yeah pick it up it's definitely worth your time this wraps up my video for my favorite tropes within romance books. These are the tropes that I tend to gravitate towards the most. And I hope you liked the video and that you were able to find books which you haven't read yet that you want to read in the future. Please let me know if you do um, have the opportunity to pick them up, what you think about them. You can DM me on Instagram anytime. And also let me know if you have any recommendations of your own which include these tropes because I'm always on the lookout for any good books which include these tropes. I hope you like my video. Please subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram and I hope to see you very very soon. Have a wonderful marvelous day. Happy reading. Take care and bye bye.